With the help of Newegg, we recently had the opportunity to build some machines for Lightroom and Premiere benchmark testing. In this video, we're going to tell you what we learned about Lightroom hardware performance. Before we jump right in, I want to thank our sponsors, which includes Asus, Rosewill, Intel, PNY, and Western Digital for providing the hardware that we use in these tests. And I also want to give a big shout out to Newegg for kind of orchestrating this entire thing. Now, in the past few months, we built a couple machines for our studio. We first started with a single core build that we basically would use for overclocking. Then last month, I took a trip down to Newegg headquarters where we built a dual Xeon computer to test against this overclocking build. And you can actually watch the entire build on the Newegg channel by clicking the build video. Going into this test, we'd suspected a few things that we wanted to verify. Based on our past experience, it seemed like we we're gonna get the best performance out of Lightroom from a single overclock CPU rather than having dual CPUs, which we felt Lightroom wasn't built to handle. And also Adobe doesn't specifically mention that Lightroom is built to handle it in their recommended hardware. So while we knew that Lightroom hasn't been optimized for dual CPUs, we still wanted to test it to verify that dual CPUs didn't in some way help taking over maybe some of the operating system processes or basically overall just help Help the application processes speed up a bit. The second thing that we wanted to check was whether the hard drive configuration, basically where you're placing Lightroom's catalog and cache location, whether that makes a big difference in Lightroom's performance. So let's move on and let's talk about the specs in the two machines that we built. In the single CPU corner, we have Thor, and yes, we used Marvel Comics superhero names for our computers. So this machine has an Intel i7-3930K processor. It's specced at 3.2 gigahertz standard. We're gonna be overclocking it to 4.3 gigahertz in our overclocking tests. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 680 with two gigabytes of video memory, it has a Samsung 840 SSD with 512 gigabytes of space for our operating system drive, and then a four terabyte Western Digital Black for our data drive. We're gonna be testing this machine in both standard and overclocked modes. In our dual CPU corner, we have the Hulk, and the Hulk has two Intel Xeon E5 2650 processors at two gigahertz per CPU. It has 64 gigabytes of RAM, an NVIDIA Quadro 4000 with three gigabytes of dedicated video memory, and two crucial M4S SSDs with 512 gigabytes, each one for the OS and one for a working drive. For our Lightroom test, we created a single catalog for Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5, both with the exact same developed presets loaded onto each image, and every test was using the same catalog on all systems. So we had the same images, the same developed settings, and between tests, we would clear out any cache and previews to ensure accuracy when running each test. So let's take a look at our results, starting with our Lightroom 4 one-to-one -one preview rendering time test, starting with the slowest machine. So the dual Xeon build came in at 100.5 seconds to render out our one-to-one -one previews. And as suspected, our single core 3.2 gigahertz build without overclocking beat it at 73.3 seconds. And the same machine, when overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz, reached 60.1 seconds to render out our one-to-one -one previews. And this made the single core overclock build approximately 40% faster in Lightroom 4 than the dual Xeon build. Now, during our export test, we saw a similar performance within Lightroom 4. So during export, the dual Xeon build, it came in at 109.6 seconds. The non-overclocked single core build hit 80.7 seconds and the overclocked single core build reached a blazing 66.1 seconds. Moving on to Lightroom 5, we saw one-to-one -one preview rendering slow from Lightroom 4's 100.5 seconds to 114.3 seconds on the dual Xeon build. On the single core non-overclock build, Lightroom 5's one-to-one -one preview was slower, once again hitting 79.1 seconds compared to Lightroom 4's 73.3 seconds. And with the overclock build, we again got down to 63.1 seconds compared to Lightroom 4's 60.1 second render time. So Lightroom 5's one-to-one preview rendering time is indeed slower than Lightroom 4's across the board. During the same export test within Lightroom 5, we noticed the same reductions in speed from Lightroom 4 to Lightroom 5. So once again, on the dual Xeon build, our Lightroom 4 time during export was 109.6 seconds. This time was extended to 127.4 seconds in Lightroom 5. On the single core build, we saw a similar performance decrease as the non-overclocked build dropped from 80.7 seconds from our export time in Lightroom 4 to 86.3 seconds in Lightroom 5. 
The 66.1 second export time on the overclock build now became 71.6 seconds in Lightroom 5 once again. So all in all, basically exporting is also slower in Lightroom 5 than when compared to Lightroom 4. And again, overclocking, well, the single CPU build, it beat out the dual Xeon build. Now this is where the interesting and kind of unpredictable stuff started to happen. For each of our systems, we tested all possible hard drive configurations. So we had the catalog on the operating system drive, we had the catalog on the data drive on an SSD versus a standard mechanical 7200 RPM drive. Lightroom's cache on the same drive as the catalog or another drive. We tried every possible configuration, SSD versus mechanical and so forth. Now what we noticed was that the performance difference in rendering previews and exporting files were negligible with every single hard drive configuration. Variances in speed differed by only 1-2% to regardless of basically the hard drive configuration, the catalog versus Lightroom, all the cache configurations, everything. Overall though, we did notice that you are slightly better off running the catalog and its cache off of the same hard drive if it's a faster performing hard drive such as an SSD. So basically if your same, if your hard drive, let's say your operating system drive is an SSD and you have an internal data drive as well that's a mechanical drive at 7200 RPMs, you're better off running the catalog and your cache off of the operating system drive even though it's shared on one hard drive. But again, even then the differences in speed varied only by around 1-2% to when rendering these previews or exporting files. In our testing, we also attempted to test the image to image lag in the develop module in Lightroom 4 to Lightroom 5 and from each of our test computers. Now from Lightroom 4 to Lightroom 5, we noticed the image to image speed in the develop module did slow down by anywhere from around 10 to 20% despite rendering smart and one to one previews in Lightroom. In addition, and here's where more of the crazy starts happening, we'd expected that rendering one-to-one -one and smart previews within Lightroom 5 is always gonna yield quicker image-to-image -image develop lag than when compared to just rendering smart previews alone or one-to-one -one previews alone. But instead, throughout all three system configurations and all four hard drive catalog and cache configurations, our results were never consistent. At times, smart previews alone were quicker, at times, one-to-one -one previews alone were quicker, and at times, the two, well, the expected one-to-one -one plus smart previews were the quickest. Either way, despite running the test multiple times, we were unable to generate consistent and usable numbers to determine any correlation for Lightroom 5's optimal preview settings configuration. What we were able to determine was that overall, Lightroom 5's image to image developing speed is around 10, 15%, even 20% slower than Lightroom 4 overall, despite any of these preview rendering configurations. So while we had high hopes for Lightroom 5, hoping that it'd be able to utilize additional system resources for greater speeds, it seems like so far we have another Lightroom that underutilizes system resources. On average, regardless of the system and the build, Lightroom was using only around 30 to 60% of our CPU's resources at any point in time, despite the CPU and the clock settings. Upon export, that was the only time we could basically get the utilization to reach 100%. So unfortunately, when it comes to hardware, we're left with the same conclusion in Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5. And that's once you have an SSD to work from, once you have more than the four gigabytes of recommended RAM, the only thing Thing that's going to boost speed is a faster single core processor and overclocking is a great option. Now be sure to check out the article for more details on our testing. We're actually going to test these machines inside of Adobe Premiere CC as well and then we'll be going back to Newegg to build out our dream machines for Adobe Lightroom still editing and for Premiere video editing. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one.